Have you or a loved one had memory changes that you wonder, are they dementia or are these normal age-related forgetfulness incidents? This is the presentation for you. I'm Dr. Deborah Beer, Director of Special Populations for Comfort Care and At Your Side Home Care. And we're going to talk about the difference between normal age-related forgetfulness and dementia. Thank you for joining us today. Our presenter today is Dr. Deborah Beer, PhD. Dr. Beer is the Director of Special Populations for Comfort Care and At Your Side Home Care. She has a doctorate in therapeutic counseling and a certificate in gerontology, as well as 25 plus years as a psychotherapist and home care director of care. She's also had a part in the development of the Comfort Care and At Your Side's proprietary training, DementiaWise. Comfort Care and At Your Side Home Care is an international non-medical home care agency. We provide non-medical home care and companion and personal care services and specialize in delivering dementia care services. Here's Dr. Beer. Today we'll talk about the confusion between age-related forgetfulness and dementia. We'll talk about forgetfulness in middle age and when it's not dementia but something else. And then we'll look at seven differences between normal age-related forgetfulness and dementia. And then we'll talk about some additional resources. This presentation is for educational purposes only. The information is not intended to be diagnostic or to serve as a substitute for actual medical advice. Seek help from a licensed medical professional for health concerns or diagnosis. Let's first look at the confusion between forgetfulness that comes with age and dementia. So when is forgetting part of normal course of life and when does it become a reason to worry, and, and how can you tell the difference? According to the Alzheimer's Association, one in three older adults will develop dementia by the end of their lives, and we worry about our loved ones, especially if you have a family history of dementia, and we may worry about our own memory, especially if we're middle-aged. Certain changes to memory are common and normal as we age. Memory changes that interfere with a person's ability to function are not part of the normal aging process and may be a sign of dementia. Let's look at forgetfulness in middle age. I call this middle age overwhelm syndrome. This is where middle aged people can experience the terrible twos. Too much to do, too much information to process, too much on their plates, and if you're adding taking care of a loved one with dementia or some other illness, this is overwhelming, and forgetfulness may be one of the natural outcomes. But how can we tell the difference at middle age if we're having normal forgetfulness versus worrisome forgetfulness? Although dementia is not common in younger adults, Consistent forgetfulness and confusion may need medical attention. Express your concerns to your physician and don't let them brush you off that you're too young. If you're concerned about your forgetfulness, it's reason enough to go to your doctor. Let's look at the seven differences between normal age-related forgetfulness and dementia. The first is, do reminders work? When the person has normal age-related forgetfulness, reminders do work. You can look in your notes, you can look something up on the calendar, you can have, be reminded by a friend or a family member and suddenly you're connecting to the information. Sometimes a word, a name, or who even knows what cues us to having a memory, suddenly we've got the information. It's just taking longer for us to recall information once we hit middle age. Abnormal memory means that reminders don't work. You can remind the person again and again, and it's as if you had never reminded them at all. That's an occasion to seek medical advice. The second difference is, can you recall memories about experiences you've had? For normal age-related forgetfulness, you may not be able to connect with the information right away, but it will come back with a reminder uh, sometimes it just takes time. It, perhaps even the next day, suddenly, the information pops into your head about an experience you had, and there it is, like fully in the flesh, as if you're experiencing it all again. 
For someone with abnormal memory, those kinds of recall of experiences may not come no matter how much you cue them or give them reminders. So people with abnormal memory aren't just forgetting information, they're losing entire experiences as if they never occurred. This is a case where you would want to see a physician for their assessment. The third difference is, can you use a memory aid? In normal age-related forgetfulness, you can. I don't know about you, I can't remember a phone number, especially since everything is plugged into my phone, but I know how to look it up. And I know how to push the buttons on my phone to make a call. Other memory aids would be a phone book, looking things up on the internet, looking on a calendar, a dictionary, etc. We know how to use the aids that we have to get the information that we're looking for. In abnormal forgetting, memory aids can't be used. They may not understand how to extract information from even a paper calendar or how to put information back on it. In fact, they may forget that a calendar has that kind of information about what to do next in special events and dates. In that case, again, it's worthwhile to see your physician. The fourth difference is, is there repeated forgetting? In normal age-related forgetfulness, it's pretty normal to forget now and then and maybe need the same information once or twice, but eventually we get it. However, this forgetting happens more and more when there's complex learning or something that we don't use very often, some information we don't use frequently. Easier to forget that. But we can usually pick up on it over time. With abnormal forgetting, it doesn't matter how much reminding and reteaching the person doesn't learn or has an extremely difficult ability to learn. If that's the case, then please see your physician for assessment. The fifth difference is, is the person's personality stable? In normal age-related forgetfulness, the person's personality is indeed stable. You recognize them for the person that you know. In abnormal forgetting, you may some, say something like, I don't even know this person anymore. What are they doing? I, I can't anticipate what they'll do next. There is a change in personality. The person may display emotions that are uncharacteristic, like anger, frustrations, defensiveness, etc. This is a good occasion to see the physician. We can very much see this personality change when we would normally expect someone to do problem solving and instead they're having an emotional reaction that shows their deteriorating judgment. The sixth difference is can they accomplish their daily tasks and fulfill their daily habits? In normal age-related forgetfulness, a person is still able to perform their customary tasks that they do every day to take care of themselves and others. They're able to feed themselves, bathe themselves, dress, et cetera, et cetera, and take care of their day. In abnormal forgetting, they have an uncharacteristic loss of personal hygiene very often. They're either not changing their clothes or they're wearing so soil clothing. Uh, they might have a weight loss because they're forgetting to eat or a weight gain because they don't remember that they just had a meal and they repeat the meal and they can't take care of themselves in those normal ways of bathing and changing their clothes, et cetera. It's not just a loss of memory, it's a loss of normal functioning, and this is definitely a sign to see your physician. And the last, the seventh of their differences, is what is the reaction to stress and fatigue? In normal age-related forgetfulness, like anybody, we have a reaction to stress and fatigue and we will be more forgetful and find it harder to think when we're exhausted and stressed. If fatigue can make a healthy memory worse, then we'll see a greater deterioration in memory and functioning in someone who has abnormal forgetting, such as dementia. Special note should be taken that if you're caring for someone with dementia, so it can be very fatiguing, and you have to give yourself um, some leeway to be forgetful and have problems thinking because fatigue and stress will do that.
So when should we be concerned about forgetfulness? When the forgetfulness is more complex than just failing to remember. It's a, not just forgetfulness, it's a loss of functioning, a pattern of deteriorating abilities and losses or changes in long-established characteristic behavior patterns and personalities. If you're concerned whether you or your loved one may have dementia, make an appointment with your primary care physician and ask for an evaluation and request a referral to one of the following, a neuropsychologist, a geriatric psychiatrist, a neurologist who specializes in geriatrics. I want to give you some tips for living with normal forgetfulness. Allow more time for recall and for performing tasks. Try less multitasking. Do one thing at a time. Make sure you get adequate rest. Don't rush. Reduce stress in your life and be patient with yourself. If we better understand normal forgetfulness, it can help us to age with more grace. Here are some additional resources. If you're a family member of someone with dementia or a healthcare professional who is managing dementia care, care, dementia caregivers or families, our local offices can assist you with solutions and strategies for your dementia care challenges. Contact your local comfort care or at your side home care office for information about our dementia care program. Thank you for joining us today.